One word to describe cultural humility for me is is love, actually. If I had to encapsulate cultural humility, the whole concepts of cultural humility, um, it doesn't do it justice, but the word that I think of it is essence. Escuchar. Being. You. Opening. Receive. Compassion. Love. The principles of cultural humility offer one more framework to contribute to what has got to be our ultimate goal, yes? Our ultimate goal is that there will be a sense of equity, a sense of equality, and a, a kind of and, and a kind of respect that we are driving forward. Cultural humility the, is, is a multi-dimensional concept and, and certainly um, Melanie Tervalon and I um, conceptualized three dimensions. The first is lifelong learning and critical self-reflection. And in that critical self-reflection it is the understanding of how each of us Every single one of us is a complicated, multi-dimensional human being. Each of us comes with our own histories and stories, our heritage, our point of view. You're looking at me now. I am very fair-skinned. When I was a little girl, my hair was blonde. My eyes are blue. People often tried to call me anything but African-American. I have a history. My identity is rooted in that history. My parents gave me the knowledge of my own social identity and my own experience in life has created that. I get to say who I am. The second tenet, uh, after uh, self-reflection and ongoing lifelong learning and development, is, is this notion that we must mitigate the power imbalances, to recognize and mitigate the power imbalances that are inherent often in our clinician um, patient or clinician client or um, service provider community dynamics. And then finally the, the piece that I would offer that Jan and I feel people often either don't read or don't like, which is, and the institution has to model these principles as well. An African-American nurse is caring for a middle-aged Latina woman several hours after the patient had undergone surgery. A Latino physician on a consult service approached the bedside and noting the moaning patient, commented to the nurse that the patient appeared to be in a great deal of post-operative pain. The nurse summarily dismissed his perception, informing him that she took a course in nursing school in cross-cultural medicine and knew that Hispanic patients overexpressed the pain that they are feeling. The Latino physician had a difficult time influencing the perspective of this nurse, who focused on her self-proclaimed cultural expertise. It was curious to this Latino physician, who first of all was Latino, not like all, um, in his case, not like all Mexican-Americans know everything there is to know about Mexican-American patients. That wasn't it. but. He might have been a resource for that African-American nurse in that moment um, that she didn't feel like she needed, again, because she had bought into this notion of competence, of cultural competence. The distinction between cultural humility and cultural competence was that we were in a, in a process and a relationship that had many other layers to it, and that we were less comfortable with, this, with even the term of competence in a way that I think people understand well, and that it implies, especially for people who are providers and are trained in academia, that you are then all-knowing and all-powerful. And we felt like that was not what was happening for us as we were learning from community and understanding in a, in a very practical way how families were coming to the hospital and feeling as if 
they really were not being heard from their own heritage and history and how that impacted what they came to the hospital with that we could we didn't know anything about hadn't even a clue about for us this is part of the humility piece of it getting to understand that not trying to humiliate you not trying to make you feel bad trying to help us all understand that there are that life is like this, and to, in a certain sense, be really happy about not knowing. Peace. I think when I am fully sitting in the place of humility, that there's a, a quiet and a spaciousness and an okayness and uh, an ease that is as close to peace with being with another person that I can imagine. Um, if I have to think about it as a road, then I think I would think about it as a road that spirals. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And a spiral actually doesn't, if you think about it in a dance context, a spiral that comes up has to come down as well. It's sort of a continuous loop. Um, and along the continuous loop, you know, many things happen and many forces may change the shape of it or um, or the depth and reach of it. Cultural humility is uh, definitely a journey for me, and it's definitely a journey that I know there's going to be some challenges, and I'm ready for those. Um, that I know every challenge I'm going to learn from, and I think it's, it's a process that, um, that I have to go through every day, and that I'm okay with going through, and it actually makes me stronger and smarter, um, and I hope wiser <laughs> um, than I was yesterday.